When planning for retirement, don't overlook this huge liability. Huge. And most of you are still going to have it. And for most of you, it's the biggest liability you've ever had. All right. So if you think about net worth, we take a net worth statement. Oh, I got an itch in my eye there. We take a net worth statement. Net worth is simply assets on the left, liabilities on the right. So you subtract your liabilities from your assets, and that's your net worth. And we hope your net worth is in the positive. If net worth is in the negative, you're probably young, and that's okay. We've all been there. Well, I'll say all of us, but many of us have been there, and you'll get yourself together. It's okay. You just keep plugging. Remember, every time you make a mortgage payment, every time you make a mortgage payment, you're increasing your net worth. You're paying down your liability, and you're increasing your principal. Or you're increasing, yeah, I guess you're increasing your, no, well, you're paying down your liability. I want to say you're increasing your equity. That's what I'm going to say. So on a mortgage, pay down the liability, increase your equity. Pay down the liability, increase the equity. That's increasing your net worth unless you're taking on liabilities on a credit card or other place. But every time you make a mortgage payment, you're increasing your net worth. Just keep that in mind. Every time you invest, you're increasing your net worth in some regard if there's any growth there because you had the money over here, you're putting it over there, but the money over here presumably isn't growing very well or it can be consumed. You're putting the money over there. You're deferring the consumption of that, and you're hoping that it can grow. So it's not a not a guarantee one for one increase of net worth, you know, while you're investing, but it kind of is. It kind of is because you're saying I'm not going to spend that money. Instead, I'm going to I'm not going to consume it today. I'm going to defer my consumption, and I hope on that deferral I get some growth on it, which will increase my net worth as well. All right. So now the biggest most people they think about their biggest liability, they're going to think about their mortgage. All right, and they're wrong. I'm just going to tell you why that's wrong. So here we got a $400,000 mortgage at a 7% interest. We got 360 payments, all right? A 30-year note, a 7% interest. So you're going to pay, and this is only for uh, principal and interest. We're not talking about property taxes. We're not talking about, uh, yeah, property taxes and insurance. We're not talking about those two things. We're just talking about P&I, principal and interest. So we're going to pay $266,000 a month to pay off that $400,000 mortgage, all right? So when all is said and done, we're going to pay $958,000, all right, to secure that $400,000 mortgage. Of that four hundred, of that nine hundred fifty-eight, how much was interest? Well, inherently, $558,000 was interest. Why? Because the value of the home was only four hundred. dollars all right? So we assumed a $400 asset. We paid $958,000 for it in total, which means the rest of five hundred fifty-eight dollars was interest. And people will say, that's my biggest liability I've ever had. And they're wrong. And the reason they're wrong is because here's our house. Our house just grown at 3% a year. It's at the end of 30 years, it's worth $970,000. All right. So yes, we did pay $558,000 of interest, but that house is now worth $570,000 more than what we paid into it. All right. That's, that's just, I mean, again, assuming you get a 3% rate of return, a growth rate on your house, it seems pretty reasonable to me. So that's just a fact. Our house... Our mortgage on our house, not only did it cover, this covered the total mortgage, so we're basically, our net worth has come out a little bit on the positive side, even after mortgage expense, but it gave us a place to live. And the one thing we know we need as a human, we need air, water, shelter, all right? Air, water, shelter. And the house gives you shelter. That's just, I mean, literally, it's just a fact. So this gave you a place to live, to lay your head down at night and to go to bed, you're going to get jiggy with your wife so you can have some kids, unlike what doing in China. China, did you hear that? They have 2 million less people in China than they did last year. More people are dying than being born by a factor of 2 million, and they're not getting jiggy with it over there in China. So all these people are like, China's going to take over the world. Uh, dude, you, <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, it's a worldwide global population uh, crisis that's happening. The United States... Uh, well, our global population, everyone's coming here, I guess. We just have a, this is why I got to vote for Trump, by the way. Oh, how dare you? I don't care. If you don't vote, if you don't vote for Trump, um, you're basically approving of the unsealed border. That's just a fact. And that means we have no country. That's, and if you, if you have no country, you know what happens next, don't you? If everybody can spout, you say, I stake a claim to this, board, this land, uh, what does that mean? And there's no dominant authority anymore. There isn't any. Uh, that's that's a chaos. That's a recipe for destruction. There's just no other way around this. We it's funny. We want to defend Israel's border, Ukraine borders, and our own border is just freaking wide open. There's no other alternative. It's Trump or bust. To to uh, literally, if we have another 10 million people coming in over the next four years or 15 million, well, who's going? What Biden's going to suddenly stop it in the second term? No. 
No, there's not. These people just keep coming in and coming in and coming in. That doesn't mean they're bad people. It doesn't mean they don't want to work hard. It just means we have no, we have no country. None. If you want your country, you have to vote for Trump. There's just no other way around that. Well, Trump freaking, is he clown? Does he, you know, have, get jiggy with all, all that stuff? I don't, I don't care what you say about it. He's the only way to secure the border. There is no other alternative, man. And you can freaking unsubscribe if you want. I don't care. That's the only hope we got. And I hate to sound like that. Trump's our only hope, you know, given all the misgivings about Trump. And all, I get all that. But it's it. At the end of the day, there is no alternative. There isn't any. You've got to seal the border. And Germany's going through that right now. In fact, the AFD in Germany is starting to really take, they're like, they're going to do a mass deportation thing if they win. And their poll numbers are going through the roof. If Trump was smart, he'd be arguing that like crazy too. It's funny, I was re- listening to uh, Jason Whitlock and some rapper was on Charlemagne's, I don't, I know who that guy is, as a clown, but he's like, everyone I know is voting for Trump. Because the blacks see this too. They're like, dude, this is insane. It's insane. And so if you want your country, you have to vote for Trump. There's no other way around it. Because you have no country if you have another 10, 50 million people just coming in because they feel like it. It's crazy, man. And if that doesn't make you mad, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it's okay. I live in Martha's Vineyard with Obama. Okay. Well, you're not part of the country, man. You're part of the country class, uh, country club. And I'm a member of a country club. Country music is what I love. I drive an old style pickup truck. I do my drinking from a Dixie cup. Yeah. Anyway, let's keep going. So here we got our house. We lived in it for 30 years. It's worth more than what we totally invest in this. All right. So now we have $970,000 of a net worth of a home that costs us $958,000 total. Well, we didn't make any money. Okay. Let's say we broke even. We had a place to live. All right. We had a place to live. That's a big flipping deal. So this is kind of a wash in the overall scheme of things. I mean, this still doesn't give you anything. I mean, in terms of cash, there's no cash here. I mean, you could reverse mortgage, which you should do, but you know, at the end of the day, there's no cash here, but it gives you even more than cash. It gives you a place to live. Food, water, shelter. All right, so now we got a million dollars in our IRA or 401k. I'm going to put you at a 15% tax bracket. You're going to lose $150,000 if you're in a 15% tax bracket just right out the gate. And that doesn't include whatever tax you got paid on Social Security because of tax torpedo, which I wrote about in my Social Security book. This is just the tax you got to pay. That's your biggest liability by far you've ever had because this right here is just money off the table. That $150,000 doesn't do anything. It doesn't put food on your table. It doesn't provide you shelter. This $558,000 of interest you actually got back by the home value later on, and it provides you a shelter over the course of those 30 years. This $150,000 didn't do anything. Oh, but you had a tax deduction on the front end. Oh, did you now? Had a tax deduction on the front end. That, what did that tax deduction do? You consumed it. You consumed it. I mean, how many people actually put their tax deductions back into the market? Not very many. I mean, you might have. You might have been the exception to the rule. Most people don't. So you consume your tax deduction is no longer there for you. Yeah, you might have got a, you might have been able to use some of that money for food and I get all that. Huh, but how much of that tax deduction actually did you get? Hmm, let's say you had a $10,000 tax deduction and you're in a 15% tax bracket. How much did it save? Oh, it saved 1,500 bucks. So $1,500, all right, $1,500 over 30 years. Oops, $1,500, oh, I can't, 15 times 30, it's a big fact, $45,000. All right, so the tax savings you had was $45,000. The tax is due now when retirement's here and there's no more income coming in except for Social Security and off your portfolio is now uh, $150,000. This is your biggest tax liability. If you're not using that as part of your portfolio analysis, your retirement planning analysis in terms of your tax liability, you're making a big mistake. It's kind of like, I don't want to say arguing, but it's kind of debating with these guys on LinkedIn about uh, you know, some of the bad sales pitches for index annuities and whatnot. And that's kind of what got my whole thing the last couple of days about doing index annuities because uh, there are some horrible sales pitches. It's, it's just silly. It's actually embarrassingly stupid. But anyway, um, but these other guys like, yeah, that's why we, we don't do index annuities or anything. We just do the, we just use a 4% rule. I say, oh, what's your fee? Oh, 1%. I said, okay, so it's not a 4% rule. It's a 5% rule. Yet here you are arguing against these insurance salesmen on their index annuities, but you aren't because they're not giving you the whole scoop of the fees and all this stuff. And they're kind of over space uh, selling the benefits. But here you are not saying your fees. You're saying 1% rule, 4% rule, but that, 
that's exclusive of your fee. Well, yeah, you know, well, I was like, no, man, four percent rule. Okay, so one percent of that, not even one percent of the four percent goes to you. The one percent of the entire portfolio goes to you. It's worse than a four percent rule because if you had a million dollars in here, that's cost me ten thousand dollars a year. If I'm only taking four, four at a four percent, that's forty thousand dollars a year. So I'm inherently I'm losing ten thousand dollars. I'm losing thirty what thirty three percent of what the four percent rule, or I got to take out another one percent, which would be fifty thousand a year on a forty thousand. How come? That's what I'm saying, man. All these guys like that guy's bad, that guy's bad. I'm like, well, maybe you guys are both you know freaking BSing people. It's it oh, drives me up the wall. Anyway, do not overlook the tax liability in your 401k, your IRA. And so for me, your old buddy Josh, that's why I paid my taxes last year. I did, in the last three years, I did pretty massive Roth conversions. Well, I'm making pretty good money. So I lost a lot of money on income tax. However, guess what? Guess what? Now I don't have to worry about it anymore. That's what's great. I can go forward and say, you know, my liability... It's behind me, man. It's behind me. My mortgage, yeah, I don't like it. I'm paying it down every month, every month, every month. But it's also providing me a place to live so I can do these awesome videos that you know you like. All right, so if you like these videos, be tuned now. Be, be, uh, stay tuned because my course is coming up. I'm telling you, I'll be producing that sucker probably by the end of this week. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to you uh, jumping on board because it's, uh, it's, it's going to crush. Just crush. Some, some guy said yesterday, hey, how about people who bought your retirement planning course? Is there a discount on that? No, it's completely different information there, guy. Completely different info. This isn't an update of my retirement planning course. This is new information about investing. All right. Love your thoughts. God bless.